How many of y'all say, I quit some things when it's not moving quick enough? Okay. Let your hand up again. And I need everybody to look at the room. Baby, you don't quit nothing. In fact, this week on Snacks with RTK, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this fast for the whole 30 days. He said, what? He said, I will take everything out of your house. That's why it's important who you hang out with. Because people want you to quit. They don't want you to succeed. They think because they buried you that you gone, but maybe they didn't know you were a what? A seed. So I'm going to title this Bag Secured. This is our first sermon in our series. And I believe that this church is a church of generational wealth. I'm going to talk about money because I can. Because I got it. Like that. Broker than a joke. 11 years ago, couldn't buy cheese with my credit. And now I'm walking in abundance. And I'm able to bless people every day because I didn't quit. When I was at Bloomingdale's 11 years ago, making $13 an hour, when I finally stopped complaining, driving to work, I hate this job. God, you hate me. I would even turn on Eye of the Tiger, Eye of the Tiger, trying to get myself in the mood. And finally, I heard the Lord say, when you get your heart right, then I can move you to another level. So you got to stop detesting. Say, I got to stop detesting where I'm at, because where I'm at plays a huge part into where I'm going. So God, I'm going to stop asking you to change my situation, and I'm going to pray that you allow me to change for my situation. Ah, you better clap. Today we're going to start with Make It Make Sense, our series. I'm going to title this Bag Secured. We're breaking the spirit of mammon off your life. We're going to start at Proverbs 3. Say Proverbs 3. How many of y'all excited about this? The rest of y'all ain't. Huh? You're going to love me in about 60 days when you like, this person's on fire. God gave me the job and the assignment of this house as your pastor and online to teach you biblically how to be wealth builders. The church will have you thinking you can't have no money. But if I went to a church where my pastor was broke, what you gonna tell me? If I walked into a salon and somebody's hair was trying to do my hair and it looked horrible, I'm getting up. Your proof has to be recognizable Y'all know how many coaches we got out there that got their degree from Zoom during the pandemic? But ain't got a pot to pee in. Because they're trying to get ahead of God. And in the long run, when you don't keep God first, what you build falls quick. And so today we're going to go to Proverbs. Say Proverbs 3. Y'all, y'all know I'm making y'all talk to me a whole lot today because I know how sensitive this subject is, <laughs> but I don't care because <laughs> I know I'm about to get y'all wealthy. <laughs> Listen, it says, trust in the Lord. Say, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do and he will show you which path to take. How many feel like you're on the dead end? You didn't seek him. I thought I did. No, you didn't. You got tired of waiting. And so you went for the shiny ball. And I've done it millions of times. But I'm proof that when you get into the will of God, he will take the time you have left and shove everything into now. Like you ain't wasted nothing. Because he knew before you were ever born in your mother's womb that you were going to come out and you were going to be rebel. He knew you were going to be hard-headed. He knew that you were going to think you were God in some situations. It says, don't, don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from what? Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Then you will have 
healing in your body and strength where? Then you will have healing in your body. So all I got to do is trust in the Lord with all my heart. That means I can't quit when the teacher's silent. So if I'm seeking you in all my ways, it says that I'm going to be blessed and I won't be impressed by myself at all. I'll keep a good heart. Then you will be, have healing in your body and strength for your what? Bones. That means you're not walking around with arthritis. You're not walking around with osteoporosis. That means you do not have to live your life in pain. Because the Bible says that by his what? You're healed. So this month, basically all we're doing is getting back to the principle. Of what God is saying in our lives. Listen to this. Then you will have healing for your body and strength for your bones. Honor the Lord. What? Well, I'm not rich. So I'm going to wait for a few more zeros. Then I'm going to do it. If God can't trust you with $400, $40 or $400, that can't even pay your cable bill. Or all your streaming platforms. How can he... Do what you're asking him to do if he can't even trust you with 10 cents on a dollar. It says, healing in your body, strength in your bones, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. Then he will fill your what? Your houses, your barns with grain, and your vats will overflow with good wine. This month, y'all ready for our challenge? You're going to tie 10% on your gross. And if you don't see God change your situation, I'm going to give all your money back. I did it last year and didn't have to give nobody back their money. And I would have. Everybody knows I'm one of the biggest givers on the planet. You cannot outgive God. God is not saying that he doesn't want you to be wealthy. He wants you to be the generational curse breaker of your family he don't want you to be broke he don't want you living off food stamps he don't want you over here barely making it and parking in the back of the church because your car is got it's a hoopty he wants you to be a representation the bible says that the wealth of the what is stored up for who which is who do you really think you're righteous really because if you thought you were righteous, you'd live different. If you really believed that you were a child and a, a child of God, then every time you walked into a room, you just knew it was going to shift. You just knew. I remember when Brandy, she was single, and she came to me. She goes, Pastor Kim... She said, I'm going to buy a house and I'm scared to death. And every day, this is why you got to have friends in your life. I was like, girl, do it. Do it. Do it. I'm just so scared, Pastor Kim. She goes to the loan officer. It's like she was telling herself, if it doesn't work out, it's okay. But because she was a faithful giver, because she shows up and serves, everything in her life was great. But she didn't feel like she could buy a house. Because buying a house scares us. Written, it's on you, boo. The water pipe break. Hello, can you come fix my? <laughs> but see, what happens is we allow ourselves to get in the mentality of weak. Because we're afraid of things that ain't even going to happen. You're scared to death to go buy a house because you lost your house during the pandemic. That's been four years ago. You can go download the Experian app. It's free. Get rid of Candy Crush if you ain't got no room. <laughs> Some of y'all got 498 addresses because you moved a lot. And all those addresses are in your Experian app. All you got to do is lay in your bed instead of Netflix and chilling. You lay in your bed and dispute. Dispute, dispute, dispute. Well, I did live there, but you don't know more. Well, I did file bankruptcy. 
That was four years ago. Dispute, dispute. And before you know it, your credit score, because you are putting effort. See, we just lay and we like out of sight, out of mind. How many of you are like that? Out of sight, out of mind. As long as I don't look at it, it ain't happening. It is. And you ain't getting no younger. And how are you going to own houses and Airbnbs and have all this money? And not, How many don't even know what that? It's like Chinese when I say that. It's like Chinese, like thinking, how am I ever going to get there? You listen to me. No one in my family was ever wealthy. I had to break that mold. How did I break that mold? I had to start stepping out in faith. And I would always say to God, God, I'm about to sell my house that I've been in. I ain't never lived by myself. I've been living in this house for the last four years by myself. This was just, just, last, year, just last four years. And I'm scared to death to move downtown, but I feel a nudging to go downtown because I feel like I can only grow for my church, for my, all my mentees, everybody that's in my life, if I get into an atmosphere that pushes me to grow. So if it's your will for me to leave and move downtown, then you're going to have to sell my house in 24 hours. I am her. And I said, I don't just want you to sell my house within 24 hours, but I want to make a buttload of money. And all of a sudden, they call me. They're like, Kimberly, there's 17 people wanting your house. The highest bidder bought it. You know why? Because I had a wreath on the front door from Brandy that said Amos 913. Her son was special needs. His name was Amos. Whenever you are covered by God... Because you've kept your heart right. When you're covered by God because you ain't looking at what your brother's got. You ain't looking at what your mama's got. You're not scrolling through influencers on social media. You are staying focused. And you are saying, God, I can do anything for 30 days. And then after that, God, I can do anything for 60 days. I will not allow myself to I, I, I go backwards. So here's what I want us to do. Y'all ready for this next challenge? This week. Say this week. I want you to go through all your bills. That includes medical. I want you to write down every bill. And next Sunday, we're going to bring it and put it up here on this altar. It's going to scare some of y'all so bad because of the amount of money you owe. But when you put things on an altar, I ain't saying he's going to wash it, but he's going to make a way. Because you can't pay it because Habakkuk 2 says write the vision and make it plain. And we're going to bring it up here. We're going to pray over it next week. And we're going to walk out of here like soldiers. You are not going to live paycheck to paycheck in this church. Because Amos 9.13 says it won't be long now. God's decree said things are about to happen so fast. Your head is about to spin. Blessing upon blessing you can't keep up. Well, I don't want to talk about this in church. This is exactly where you need to talk about it. Listen. So y'all know what we're doing, right? That means y'all got to go through all your bills. All of them. Even the IOUs. <laughs> this whole month, you got to be God hustlers. Because who you hang out with is contagious. Singles, either you're going to marry somebody that is a freeloader or you're going to marry somebody that wants to build empires with you. It's your way of thinking. Listen to this. There are 500 verses on prayer in the Bible. Less than 500 on faith. But over 2,000 on money and possessions. Jesus talked about money in 16 out of 38 parables. You know what the biggest divorce reason is? Huh? Money, money, money. Money. How we handle our finances tells God who is first in our lives. Is it your electric bill? Car payment? Haggai 1, 5, and 6 says, 
This is what the Lord of heaven's army says. Look at what's happening to you. You have planted much, but harvest. Y'all need to read that. Some of y'all just did this. <laughs> y'all, I didn't pay tithe either forever, okay? I was like, I can't afford it. I'm a single mama. Then I kept being the one to get pulled over for pullover law. Like, who even knew there was a pullover law? And it'd be $565. And my daddy would say, baby, God going to get his money. I used to have a car that would break down all the time. It's my knockoff Bentley. My 300 Chrysler. It, every month was in the shop. When I gave it away, guess what? <laughs> they didn't have one problem with it. I was so mad. Then I started realizing it's because I don't have my house in order. I had to allow God, I had to do what the word of God says, which is 10 cent on a dollar, goes to God, not to St. Jude. That's over and above. Listen, it says, this is what the Lord of heaven's army says. Look at what hap what's happening to you. You have planted much, but harvest little. You eat, but are not satisfied. You drink, but are still thirsty. You put on clothes, but cannot keep warm. Your wages disappear as though you were putting them in pockets filled with holes. Yikes. Man, I reached in my pocket last Sunday when I was preaching, and there was like a $100 bill in there. I was like, ah! I even looked down at it. I was like, won't it do it? I even got green on. I'm going to green the whole month. I didn't even mean to do this, like prophetically. Listen, it says in, in say, Proverbs 11:24. Give freely and become more wealthy. Listen, listen, y'all ready? Preach, Gail! Because I know y'all like sitting on eggshells right now. It says, give freely and become wealthy. Be stingy and lose. <sighs> the generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be. Money, say money. Should never be the focus. Y'all ready for this? Money should be the fruit. Your fruit will outlive their lives. You go from being the black sheep of the family to the goat. What's a goat mean, Kim? Greatest of all times. Listen, when you walk in your purpose and you're obedient, what happens? Everything falls into place. That means even when you're going through the shadow of the valley of death, you won't fear no evil. You know that rod and that shaft shall, huh? It's going to comfort you, baby. When your kid is in the hospital, they come in in your room to ask you to go down and pray for all the other kids because something is happening in that room because you aren't afraid of nothing. All that's attached to money. It's called obedience. One ounce of obedience will do more for you than what? All the prayer in the world. Every time you take a test, when you get paid, whether you get paid once a month, twice a month, every week, the test is who are you going to worship and who are you going to thank first? Is it that electric company, that car bill? Who gets the first portion of your income? Say who? That's who you're thinking. That's tight, but it's right. <laughs> Listen to this. Tithing is a test. Write this down. Tithing is a test. One penny on every dime. He chose 10% because it's representing testing. It's fair for everyone. Listen to what Matthew 6, 24 says. I'm giving y'all so much scripture today. Matthew 6, 24 says, no one can serve what? No one can serve two masters. For you will hate one and? You will be devoted to one and? You cannot serve God and be enslaved to what? Money. 
Some of y'all fall asleep every night in your, in your bank app <laughs> instead of your Bible. You're not trusting God. This goes for your health, relationships. The Bible says have no idol above God. Have no idol. Listen to what it says, Luke 16, 9 through 13. Y'all ready for this? It says, and I say to you, make friends for yourselves by unrighteous mammon. And when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust? With true riches. And if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you? That means time clock fraud. That means your taxes. People see your, y'all ain't coming back next Sunday. Ha! People see your deeds, but God sees your. And so this whole month, y'all, we getting snatched for Jesus. We're going to be snatched saints all the way around. When we walk into a room, the atmosphere shifts because we're in there. We're not holding on to nothing from our past. What is mammon? Does anybody know what mammon is in here? Come on, somebody yell it out. The God of money. Mammon is an Aramaic word which means riches, but came from the Cenarian gods of riches. Brandy could have stayed in her apartment, single, waiting for a man to come save her. But she got in a place where we're pushing her. She bought her house, then she got a fence. She wanted a whole fence all the way around the house. Oh my God, that's Kim, I'm scared, I'm scared. Buy your fence. And as soon as she got herself built up, God brought her a bounty going. He actually healed her marriage that had walked through a divorce. Why? She started doing the principles of the Bible. And God can do anything but what? He ain't no liar. See, the problem is we've allowed ourselves to be around people that demonstrated God very bad. You ain't never going to see me hiding in an office. You're going to see me out there hugging on people. Because I realize that if God has put me as the head of this ship, then I can never get full of myself. But do you know how long it took me? I had to work in some of the worst ministries where they treated me like a peasant. I had to watch Christians talk about me and kick me when I walked through divorce. I had to watch myself have to move back in with my mother and daddy at 36 years old with my two sons. I couldn't even buy cheese with my credit 10 years, 11 years ago. And what was God doing? He was preparing me for now. Because he don't play about you. So if he's allowing you to walk through something that feels like death, sometimes he has to break your spirit to save your soul. If I would not have experienced at the hands of judgmental people, I would never be getting up every morning at 8 a.m. I used to be no coffee, no doggy. <laughs> Monday through Friday, there's sometimes I want to sleep. But I've made a commitment. And when God says make a commitment and stand on it, he says, I am the kind of God that what I start, I will finish. But I can't push you. you got to willingly be able to move into your destiny. If I would not have lost everything 11 years ago, I would not be getting up mornings. I'd be like, let them die. Let them die. But now I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> not on my watch. Y'all ain't going to hell for nothing. Y'all ain't going to be broke. You ain't going to be standing in the line at the food stamp line. You're not going to be over here written for the rest of your life. No, you got to get around some people that can tell you, baby, 
You are breaking generational curses for your lineage, for your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, your great-great-grandchildren. But Kim, I don't know how to handle money. I'm scared to death. I'm scared to even get a promotion because what if Sally Mae comes after me? What if the IRS comes after me? Baby, you got to get to a place where you jump. And if you, listen, if you can't fly, God going to come and save you or he's going to teach you how to fly. But God says, get out of your way. Stop allowing yourself. When my daddy died, my daddy was a preacher, and he took care of, took care of everything. He did everything. That's why I didn't want to be a preacher or a pastor. Because I was like, I have watched my dad and mom suffer. Buy cars for people in his name. And then whenever the, the lease was up, they would park in the parking lot and tell us to go find it. I'm telling you, 80,000 miles over. Your character, you listen to me. You can't walk around lying to yourself like a narcissist. My character's good. No, it ain't. Some of your character's not good. My character was not good. I went through relationships like I was changing underwear. Because I would not look at myself in a mirror. I would lay in my bed at night and be like, God, you hate me! Because I felt like I couldn't get a break. And finally one night when I'm laying in my bed, I said, God, my brother's over here killing it. My daddy don't believe in women preachers, so I'm just having to struggle. That was a lie. But I was telling myself stuff so I would feel okay with my sin and deprivation. I was angry. I lay in my bed every night stalking people that walked out of my life. I let a bunch of church people put the price tag on me. Tell me I couldn't be used to God. Hello. I'm standing right here as proof. Sometimes the reason they don't value you is because if they valued you, they would get the credit for where you're at or where you're going. I was laying in my bed one night and I said, God, what you want and then you can't attract what you want because you're still stalking the ones that don't want you the rejection was redirection God's protection and I'm laying in that bed came by cheese with my credit my kids went from having every playboy a uh, playboy PlayStation. Every PlayStation game. I was an interior designer. I told people I could decorate and they believed me. And the devil kept blessing me so I would stay in my sin. But when I finally hit rock bottom and found out who the rock is at the bottom, I realized it was Jesus and Jesus alone. And that one day when I'm laying in that bed and I said, God, take this pain away from me. He said, I can't take it away. You got to get up and walk away from it. What does that mean? I ain't staying here anymore. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I don't know what you're doing, but I promise you by June of this year, I'm not going to look like where I'm at. I ain't gonna stay here. I ain't gonna be overweight. I ain't gonna be having high blood pressure. I ain't gonna be having cholesterol issues. And I sure ain't gonna worry about money. Why? Because 
because I'm loyalty. He didn't put me in timeout. I put myself in timeout because of humans. People will literally talk about the skeletons in your closet while there's a screaming to get out. And it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. If you don't get free from small minds, you let people in the cheap seats be the loudest ones in your life. You follow people that you wouldn't even want to live their life. Mammon is a spirit of the world. I'm trying to keep up with the Joneses. If you do what God says to do, you ain't gonna have to carry Poochie. You can get Gucci. Sometimes it's a season. Well, I don't even really want Gucci, Kim. I just want to make it. No! You want it all back. Plus entrance. together till I was 45. What do I mean? At 45, I realized that thieves don't rob empty homes. And I realized that nothing changes until I change. Because a miracle is easy to get, but it's hard to keep. If you don't feel worthy, you know what's making you not feel worthy? Bills, stress, toxic relationships, lies of the enemy. Mammon is the spirit of the world that is not money. It's a spirit that rests on money that's not submitted to God. All money has a spirit on it. It's either has God's spirit or mammon's spirit. Money has been submitted to God and doesn't try to replace God. He's like, you've been praying for that boat? As soon as I give you that boat, you're going to forget me on Sundays. The only time I'm going that boat's on Sunday, Pastor Kim, but I'm watching you on live stream. Let your kid play every little league on the planet so he sees that God is not the majority. Little league is. So this whole month, y'all, I want us to begin to get back into alignment. Some of y'all got to take your power back. How you gonna do that? One day at a time, sweet Jesus. I might fall, but I'm gonna get back up again. I'm not gonna get my value from people. I'm gonna get it from the Word of God. I'm gonna commit to giving God. I'm gonna read Malachi this month. Jesus said, you can't serve God and mammon. You, you, you will be loyal to one and despise the other. This is why people are mad at God. Robin Peter to pay Paul. Ain't nobody told you to go buy that $1,900 a month car. But you were keeping up with the Joneses and then the Joneses moved to Alabama. But God is a God of start overs, do overs. That's how I live my life to this day. If it can leave my life, it wasn't mine. When I've done all that I can do and it still walks out, it wasn't mine. And what do I do? I crank my engine. I go to the gym, I get on the treadmill, y'all. A year and a half ago, if you saw me running, you better run too. Because I'm being chased. And now what do I do? I get in there and I turn on the Word of God and I get on that treadmill and I start moving and I start shaking and I start believing. I turn on Chai Tribune. I want it all back. It promises you, it promises us security. Mammon tells you that it can insulate you from life's problems. It promises you peace, joy, significance, power. How come it's the only thing that Jesus said you can't serve God in? Y'all understand what mammon is or somebody's still confused? Come on, we got to teach you the word. You got to let me know so I can fix it. 
mammon is anything that becomes in the place of God. Mammon isn't a spirit. How come it can't talk? Here's what it says. Mammon talks to us like this. If you have the right credit cards, if you have the right clothes, you got to have your pay. You can get that sheen haul every other week. Before you know it, you owe $10,000. And you only know where those clothes went. It's making your mind up. Mamma says, if you have more money, you can do what you want, go where you want, and live where you want, y'all. I know people that have MTV cribs, but ain't got no friends to come inside them. $10,000 mattresses, but no sleep. MTV crib, refrigerators, but no appetite. robbing Peter to pay Paul. This week, here's another challenge. Y'all ready for this? Pay attention to your spirit. Pay attention to how you feel when that person calls you. Pay attention when that boss walks in the room. Pay attention to your spirit when you're sitting at lunch with the same loud mouth chunky butt you always sit with. You hear me? Lift up your hands like this. Say, Lord, I refuse to be distracted because I know that you're turning up the heat in my life. Goodness and favor shall follow me all the days of my life. Y'all listen to me. There's some of you that laid down dreams. Some of y'all that laid down dreams because people didn't believe in you. It's time for you to get back up. It's time for you to take some risk. It's like being in a fire department. I just saw this in the spirit. You know that big old pole that comes down and they just sweep around it? God said, get on it and slide. Trust me. Father, in this place today, I bind every spirit of anger. Because y'all listen to me, a critical spirit brings forth poverty. How does that happen, Kim? Because life and death and the power of your words. Nothing in my life was ever handed to me. where they go and I held on to that I'm special ed my whole life until I started speaking Amos 9 13 over myself and I said God if I ever speak negative and doom and gloom over you and myself because when you talk ugly about yourself you're talking ugly to God I said convict me y'all at 45 I started seeing things shifting monetarily in my life Three years ago, we had $17,000 left on this building. And I heard the Lord say, take a check to church tonight. I said, oh, no, 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 no. We're about to see somebody really give that offering tonight. He said, yeah, you. $17,000. I was scared to death. When my daddy died, he gave me $25,000. Where did that go? right in this house. I did not go buy a car. I watched my mother take their bills two years ago. She never knew passwords. She never knew anything they owed. And in two years, my mother paid off $75,000. Y'all listen to me. Her money didn't change. Her wisdom did. She went to YouTube University. She started asking questions. And now she's paid everything off.
God is saying, stop fretting over things that you got. It's too small. You're thinking too small. You got to take the lid off. But Kim, how do I do that? Every day, you got to walk around saying, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm the top and not the bottom. I'm a lender and not a borrower. I'm a generational wealth builder in my family. My house sold within 24 hours. I went downtown and bought at the top of the building, out of my budget. But the money I made off my house made it the budget. Why? Because God is in the details. I'm pushing my staff, start other income. I paid them very well. But you gotta have multiple streams of income. Valerie said, but uh, and she gets paid very well. She said, I don't know where all my money's going. I said, sit down and budget. How much did you spend on Uber Eats? She's embarrassed. 2000. So what she did was she shut it down and started praying for wisdom. She has now launched her candle company that smells delicious in 30 days. Me and Lo pushed her to get her LLC, her work, whatever it's called, license. Angel, can I tell your story? Her husband died. And she said, last year was just going through a hard time. Like I couldn't figure out where the money was. She said, but I never stopped tithing and believe in God. And she said, one day I'm just combing through all my envelopes. And she said, there was a, a check. I want the dollar amount. You don't want to tell me. $45,000. Sitting there because she thought it was just other mail that looked like every other mail. God will never leave you in a deficit. Do you hear me? It took her cleaning out her drawers to find that envelope. Some of y'all this week start cleaning out them drawers. You hear me? Clean out your car, get your house ready. Baby, you are in the penthouse. Listen to me. When you've lived in deficit for so long, if you're not careful, you will get to the front porch and stop because it's better than it was. But you are not front porch Christians. You are penthouse. Do you hear me? I don't care how old you are. I don't care how many mistakes you all have. I don't care if you can't buy cheese with your credit. I prophesy over you that things are shifting in your life, that you are getting yourself full of wisdom. You believe it? How many of y'all believe it? Everybody lift up your hands. Say, Lord, I repent of my sins. Everything that I've done that's called hell in my life, forgive me and help me make things right. Lord, I believe. Ephesians 3.20 that says that you're going to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than I can ever ask or think. Lord, show me the areas in my life that I need to surrender and make it so real that it's like a stop sign beat me upside the head. Help me get out of my own way. Lord, Stop letting me look at the doors that have closed on me as a bad thing. Because in this season, I'm coming back to buy the whole doggone building. This is my season. Sell, this is my season. I got favor. I got joy. I got abundance. That includes parking spots.
money is coming to your house. I want to hear it. Next week, what is your homework this week? Huh? Some of y'all ain't going to do it. But I'm praying you can't sleep. I just can't. I want you to write down your debt. And next week, we're going to bring it right up here. And we're going to commit to God. And he's going to help us pay it off. He's going to debt consolidate some, write it off. And he's going to give us the opportunity to begin again. Good. What does that mean? You may buy your house at 47. But you ain't going to be driving up in here hiding your hoopty in the back of the parking lot. Now this month you just park it right up front. And get out of it and say, my testimony. That's a testimony. Even get out and take your hanky out from it. Make sure everything's clean. This month we're getting our house in order. And we're preparing for where we're going. Amen.